This is a video on several kinds of surface integrals and what we're going to do is look at some of the details of this surface integral flowchart. It's probably not visible here. I'll try to post a link later for those of you who are joining and are not, not part of my class. But what I'd like to do is talk about surface integrals that you can compute when you have an orientable surface S. Uh, and when your surface S is orientable, then there's two kinds of surface integrals that you can compute now that you could not compute before. So one of these things is you can compute the flux of S, and the other thing is you can look at Stokes' theorem, right? So the function, the scalar function capital G, uh, but the, the scalar function capital G can be the dot product of the vector field F and N, N is this that's found up here. It's the vector function of uh, unit normal to your surface. Or G can be a curl of your vector field, which is its own vector field dotted with N. And you'll notice that when you set up the surface integral and you integrate your surf, you integrate G, excuse me, over your surface of F dot N, then this is the surface integral that shows up on the surface integral side of the divergence theorem. And if you had used this as your G, then this is the integral that shows up on the surface integral side of Stokes' theorem. So one of the first questions is, when do you use Stokes' theorem versus divergence theorem? So before I do that, I'll just mention that the notation um, that I am using uh, is following Thomas's calculus. All right. So, um, what I have here is, I'd like to show you first uh, when you use um, Stokes' theorem. So, Stokes' theorem is the one, remember, that has the curl of F in it. And how I'd like to demonstrate that is using this soda bottle, okay? So, this is an orientable surface. Um, the surface has two sides, so there's a side that you can easily get to. And the side, there's sort of an inside of this surface where soda normally resides. And this is the kind of surface that you'd compute uh, the integral for Stokes' theorem on, because this surface has a boundary. What is the boundary of the surface? It's just the rim right here, okay? It's, it's right where you drink the soda out of. So let's take this surface and use this vector to orient, sorry, it's hard to see here, but let me, let's move this. I like to orient the soda bottle outside, right? So on some parts, like this bumpy part on the bottom, you know, this vector can't possibly quite do this, but, you know, due to all these bumps, the vector function here will move wildly, and along the side, because of how flat it is here, the, the normal vector here will have no z component. Right? And as you get up here, let's turn the, the bottle, um, the orientation vector, this vector here, which points out away from the soda bottle, uh, has to agree in orientation with the boundary. So the boundary is going to be a curve, and you can see from this arrow going counterclockwise, this this drawn-in arrow in black back there goes counterclockwise when this arrow here points straight at us. This suggests this orientation going that way, going towards the... Excuse me, let's try this again. Going towards the left. Okay. So that means if we look at this, this bottle from... I guess if the z-axis is up, but let's rotate it then we see that the orientation along this rim here, the boundary of the surface, called C, this will be oriented clockwise, actually, if we are viewing from Z as infinity, which we are at the moment. We can do the same experiment, perhaps, on another surface, like this Tupperware container, right? So this Tupperware container uh, does not have a lid on it right now, so it has this boundary, and we can, again, orient this so that we orient this Tupperware outward, and the outward orientation, just due to the shape, also happens to be, let's see if we can fit this in here, 
if this is the outward orientation, then just due to the shape, somewhere else it also happens to be the downward orientation. And if we notice here, let's just leave this in place, the outward orientation uh, also creates this orientation of the boundary, this curve, which goes around this way. Right? It starts here, travels, starts from here, travels to the left. Or if we look at it from this way, it travels what looks like clockwise over here. All right. So that's when you have a surface with a boundary, that's when you're going to compute the surface integral side of Stokes' theorem. But then there's also the flux of a vector field across your surface. And this is when you'll compute, uh, if you want to compute the integral directly, you can do that, or you can convert it using the divergence theorem under a certain condition. And what is that main condition? Is that the surface now this time needs to be the boundary of a three-dimensional region. So the surfaces we just looked at, the soda bottle with the cap missing, and the Tupperware container without the top, these don't bound a three-dimensional region, right? Because there's this open hole up here. But if we take the bottle and, oops, if we take the bottle and twist the cap on, and now the surface, what I think of for the surface is really all the packaging. So I'm thinking of the green bottle as before, but also the cap on it. Then this is a closed surface. Or if you want, this surface is still orientable, so it has one side and another side, but one of the sides really corresponds to being the inside. There's an inside and an outside. And the inside, or the spot where all the soda would fit, that's a three-dimensional region. Likewise, when we look at this Tupperware container, right now it has a boundary, and because it has this boundary, it doesn't completely enclose a three-dimensional region. That is, if I were to put something inside here and turn this upside down, the food would fall out. Right? But as soon as I close it, then nothing can escape from it. <laughs> Tupperware container fail. So right now, if I think of this new surface, this modified surface, which also has the top, then this surface is the boundary of a three-dimensional region, which looks something like a rectangular prism, although this Tupperware is a little rounded. And it's in this case, when you have a surface that completely encloses a three-dimensional region, that you'd want to be looking at the divergence theorem.